Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to be discussing a confirmation that there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with the modern ideas of particle physics. The standard model of particle physics, at least for now, seems to predict the world pretty well. At least the parts that it's supposed to predict. But I guess more specifically we're going to talk about the recent discovery, or I guess rediscovery, coming from a very important particle physics experiment known as the ATLAS. Part of CERN and part of the Large Hadron Collider, the largest particle accelerator in the world. And in this case it's actually in regards to something we've discussed last year that to some extent created a huge problem for the particle physics when it was originally reported back in the middle of 2022. And in this case it's actually in regards to something we refer to as W boson. With that 2022 discovery being that the actual predicted mass versus calculated mass for this unusual subatomic particle, as reported by the younger Anton right here, might have actually been somewhat off. This picture right here kind of shows you the predicted value seen as a black bar and the observed value from the 2022 experiment. And even though the actual difference was very minute, specifically 80.379 versus 80.433, because of the previously accurate observations from other experiments, this created a pretty big issue. The issue being that nobody could explain what's actually causing these discrepancies and as reported back in 2022, this basically implied that the standard model of physics or particle physics might have been either incorrect or was missing something crucial that nobody had an explanation for. And this was a pretty big deal. All of these super expensive, super powerful particle accelerators have already reached such a tremendous accuracy that all of them have been producing extremely accurate results that were more or less consistent across the board. Yet suddenly one of them produced something that was kind of off. And this wasn't really adding up and could not be explained right away. For particle physics, or actually a lot of physicists in general, this was a huge deal. A lot of naysayers of particle physics already started using this as an excuse to basically say that the entire model is incorrect. But that's not really science at work, because science at work is doing science again and again until you actually see what's happening. And specifically trying to see if the results from that last year's experiment were actually correct. And that experiment was conducted by the Fermilab inside their particle accelerator known as Tevatron, which though not as powerful, did operate for much longer. Although more specifically this was part of the CDF or Collider Detector at Fermilab, the international collaboration has been going on for a few decades now. Once again you can learn more about all of this in the video in the description from last year. Oh hey what's up younger Anton? Anyway, so as you can probably tell from the title and from how I started this video, this, or I guess this, was possibly incorrect. Even though last year's prediction suggested that the W boson might have been a little bit heavier, using a completely new technique and new analysis, the scientists using much more powerful CERN definitively confirmed that there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with our models or our predictions. The particle's mass is a close fit to the standard model's predictions. Or in other words, there doesn't seem to be anything strange here, nothing weird to see here. But in this case I think it's also important to understand the ramifications or why all of this is measured and what exactly we're trying to learn here. Or I guess more specifically, what is W boson? What exactly does it do around us? And why is it so difficult to measure its mass? So here's actually the intriguing part or something that's kind of counterintuitive. Which also sort of highlights how ridiculously unusual and still somewhat difficult to explain various subatomic particles actually are. The predicted mass of the W boson, which is once again about 80,379 mega electron volts, is more massive than the proton, the neutron, and in some cases even certain atoms like iron. But none of this really matters because these subatomic particles exist for just a fraction of a second. And they only seem to have one single role. They mediate what's known as weak interaction, also known as the weak force, one of the four fundamental forces. So for example they can be responsible for changing one atom into a slightly different atom. For example nuclear decay, such as transformation of one atom into another atom, is entirely driven by this particular subatomic particle when for example an atom of iron turns into an atom of cobalt. But the actual process happens on a much smaller scale, inside neutrons, when one of the down quarks can spontaneously change into an up quark. This particular process seems to be spontaneous and sort of random. And when this happens, it releases this really massive particle the scientists now refer to as W boson. A particle that was very hypothetical until its confirmation decades ago and eventual confirmation for its mass and what it seems to do inside various subatomic particles. But this boson exists for a fraction of a second, 
then becoming an electron and an antineutrino. As a matter of fact, this is one of the main ways neutrinos are produced around the universe. With neutrinos, by the way, being a separate topic we're going to be discussing really soon, because these are very mysterious and also very important particles that might one day explain a lot of things. And so in this case, W boson is a kind of a mediator. But because of its really short existence, and because we don't physically see any of these particles, and can actually only measure them by conducting various particle collisions and then seeing interaction of subatomic particles, while using a lot of statistical prediction to try to see what's going on here, in order to produce more and more accurate results, the scientists needed several things. One of those things was conducting more and more experiments and getting more and more data. Something they've been doing now for several years. But the other thing that was missing here was a statistical interpretation model for all of these results that were collected over the years. And so compared to the result from last year, this is basically what changed. The scientists applied a new statistical model, reanalyzing a sample of 14 million W boson candidates, usually produced during proton-proton collisions, with this revised statistical approach improving on the results dramatically with their new findings potentially being about 16% more precise than any previous detections. But I guess more importantly, calling into question 2022 results from the Tevatron Collider in the US. In this case, they actually had some additional results from 2017 to validate some of their findings, bringing the total measurement very close to the predicted value of 80,357 mega electron volts. Their value was 80,360, so just a tiny variation. And the thing is, this is a pretty important field of study, mostly because, well, of the thing behind me. Technically, the Sun is the biggest nuclear reactor next to us and is potentially responsible for producing the most neutrinos in the vicinity. All of these neutrinos are produced, similar to the process I described previously, with the help from W bosons. Here's actually the first confirmation for the existence of neutrinos. We'll be talking a little bit more about this in the video coming out soon. But the thing about neutrinos is that they're ridiculously difficult to find and also to confirm. It took decades of research to finally confirm their existence, and certain neutrinos have still not been found at all, even though they should exist out there. And because they're so difficult to find and to catch, that's basically why W boson studies have also had a lot of difficulties as well. Mostly because W bosons dissolve into neutrinos as part of the fundamental theory. And so in reality, even though W boson by itself might not be super important, because they do produce neutrinos, which are believed to be everywhere, with like billions and billions of them passing through your body right now every single second, but actually not doing anything to you, trying to understand exactly what these unusual particles do in the universe and how many of them there are is of course one of the main reasons for a lot of these experiments. Or at least one of the main reasons I'm interested in this, mostly because neutrinos have also been proposed as an explanation for many different mysteries across the entire universe. And a very specific type of neutrinos might also once and for all confirm the Big Bang Theory. And we'll actually be discussing this very soon in the video that's going to be coming out in the next few weeks. So subscribe if you'd like to learn more about this particular topic. And so in the end, at least for now, it looks like the particle physics is somewhat correct. And more importantly, all of the subatomic particles predicted by this model have been more or less accurately measured by various experiments. But even though protons, electrons, and neutrons are understood pretty well, it's really the neutrinos we're going to be focusing on next. So until that video, check out that previous video in the description below. Thank you for watching, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.